Hello everyone. My name is Raj Kumar Goli and I'm a technical marketing engineer in Intem based networking group primarily focusing on Catalyst 9000 switching platforms. This is Cisco Enterprise Switching video series where we showcase features, technologies and solutions offered on the Catalyst 9000 switches. In this video, I will go over the details related to precision time protocol feature on Catalyst 9000 platforms. I will also run through a quick demo that shows how to configure PTP on Catalyst 9000 switches. Precision time protocol or PTP is a protocol used to distribute time across an Ethernet network. PTP was originally defined and standardized by IEEE in 2002. PTP is a client-server architecture and uses multiple event messages to distribute the clock from master to client over an Ethernet network. Catalyst 9000 switches support PTP v2, which is version 2 of PTP. There are other protocols that can distribute the clock like NTP, Network Time Protocol. NTP provides accuracy in milliseconds or seconds whereas PTP provides accuracy in microseconds or nanoseconds. Hardware timestamping is critical to providing this level of accuracy. Software timestamping is done further up in the OSI layer, whereas hardware timestamping is done at the physical layer, resulting in greater accuracy. The biggest source of error in network timing is often due to variations in queuing time in switches and routers. NTP does not have a solution for this, whereas PTP uses special switches and routers called transparent clocks or boundary clocks to solve this problem. A PTP network is made up of PTP enabled devices. There are different PTP device types like ordinary clocks, grandmaster clocks, boundary clocks and transparent clocks. Ordinary clock is a device with a single connection. This is usually an end device on a network. It can be a PTP client, preferred grandmaster, master clock, or slave clock. Grandmaster clock acts as a primary reference clock for all other PTP devices in the network. Grandmaster is chosen by the best master clock algorithm defined in IEEE standards. Boundary clocks recover the time at intermediate points across the network and forward the time in a new set of messages. Typically, these clocks are found in switches and routers in the network and help reduce the effect of delay variation in the network caused by queuing delays. They terminate the PTP flow, recover the clock, timestamp and regenerate the PTP flow. They act as intermediary device between a PTP grandmaster and its PTP clients. Transparent clocks are also found in switches and routers across the network. But instead of recovering the time and forwarding it, they simply record the amount of time the message spent traversing that switch or router. When the message finally arrives at the PDP client, it contains information about the accumulated delay through the network, allowing the client clock to precisely align its local time to the master clock. Here you can see a complete list of PDP features that are supported on Catalyst 9000 switching platforms. Catalyst 9000 switching platforms support PDP v2, which is IEEE 1588 v2 and 802.1 AS profiles. Two-step PDP message exchange is supported and Catalyst 9000 switches use multicast messaging for PDP. For transport, Catalyst 9000 switches support both layer 2 and layer 3 mode. The domain is configurable and Catalyst 9000 switches support a single domain. Peer delay and delay request response mechanisms are supported and PDP can be enabled on layer 2, layer 3 as well as ether channels. Let's take a quick look in the lab on how to enable PDP on Catalyst 9000 switches. Here is a quick topology that we will use for this lab. The topology consists of three switches. We have a PTP master connected to 9301 which acts as a master clock for this PTP domain. We have a PTP client which is connected to 9302. In this topology, the PTP master and server are spread across a layer 3 network. 
So we will configure the Catalyst 9300s and 9500 for layer 3 transport mode and boundary clock to distribute the clock from the master to the client. Before configuring the switches, let's take a quick look at the client and the grandmaster details. I am using Ixia here to simulate the PTP master and client. As we saw earlier, I have two Catalyst 9300 switches that have PDP devices connected. On the left hand side, I have configured a Grand Master which is connected to 9301. And on the right hand side, I have a PTP client which is connected to 9302. Let me quickly start the PTP Grand Master. As you can see, we have Ethernet and IP connectivity. Since this is a grandmaster, PTP is also up. Now, let me go ahead and start the PTP client and see what the behavior is. Here, we see the Ethernet and IP connectivity. Since the intermediate switches are not configured for PTP, the client is not able to sync to the master PTP clock. Let me go ahead and stop the PTP client and PTP master we can then go ahead and configure the Catalyst 9300 and 9500 for PDP. Here are the consoles of the three Catalyst 9000 switches where we are going to enable PTP on. Prior to configuring PTP, let's take a quick look at the license on the switch. As you can see here, the switch is enabled for Network Advantage and DNA Advantage license. Network Advantage is mandatory to enable PTP on the device. All three switches have been enabled for Network Advantage, so we are good to enable PTP on these devices. PTP Master and Client are separated across a Layer 3 network and are located in different subnets. PTP Master is in VLAN 100 of 9301 switch and PTP client is in VLAN 101 of 9302 switch. I have pre-configured routing for IP reachability between master and the client. We will now go ahead and enable IPv4 network transport. To enable this, we will use the command PTP transport IPv4 UDP. Now we have to enable the PTP mode using PTP mode command. Here we see boundary and transparent mode. Since we are distributing clock across a layer 3 network, we will go ahead and enable PDP boundary mode. We have two ways to account for delay from master to client. One is delay request mechanism and other is peer delay request mechanism. We have enabled Ixia to use delay request mechanism. So we will use the same mechanism on all three switches. Once the mode is enabled, PTP gets enabled on all the interfaces by default. If you want to disable PTP on a specific port, you would have to configure no PTP enable under that interface. You can verify the profile and device type with show PTP clock command. Default profile or IEEE 1588v2 is the default profile on Catalyst 9000 switches. You can see that device type is boundary clock as we configured earlier. We can also see that network transport protocol is UDP IPv4 here. I will go ahead and enable IPv4 transport and boundary mode on other two switches using PTP transport IPv4 UDP and PTP mode boundary delay request command on other two switches. Now that we have PTP configured on the intermediary switches from PTP master to the client, let's go ahead and start the PTP master and client from Ixia. Now that we have PTP configured on the intermediate switches, let's go ahead and start the PTP master and the client. I'll go ahead and start the PTP master. As soon as I start the PTP master, I can see the Ethernet IPv4 and PTP come up just fine like we noticed previously. I'll go ahead and start the PTP client. 
as soon as I start the PTP client, I can see Ethernet and IPv4 up, whereas PTP is still negotiating. Now I can see the PTP is also up on the PTP client. Now we need to make sure if the PTP client is in sync with the actual grandmaster, which is located on the left side. For this, let's look at some of the PTP properties on the grandmaster and the client. As you can see, port 61 is the port that is configured to be the master for this PTP domain. If you look at port 61, which is the master, we can see the configured role as master and the negotiated PTP state is the grandmaster for the PTP domain. Let's take a quick look at the clock identity. Here on the top, you can see the clock identity for 61, which is the grandmaster as 0022. Now let's go ahead and look at the client. The client is configured on port 611. As you can see, the configured role is slave and the PTP negotiated state is also slave, which is correct. Let's make sure that the client actually sees the grandmaster as 0022. As you can see in here, the grandmaster port identity that the client actually sees is the grandmaster that we have configured onto the left side, which means the PTP or the time synchronization from master to the client is happening correctly. You can also verify the grandmaster information from all the switches in the PTP domain. Any switch which is part of the PTP domain should see the same grandmaster. You can verify that using the CLI show PTP parent, which would give information regarding the grandmaster clock identity. As you can see on 9300 PTP switch one, we see zero colon two two as the grandmaster clock identity. We can run the same command on the 9500 switch. Show PTP parent to look at the output. We can see the clock identity or the grandmaster clock identity is the same here as well. And on 9300 PTP2, let's run the same command where we can see the grandmaster clock identity as the configured grandmaster. As you can see, it is very easy to configure PTP on Catalyst 9000 switches to distribute the time from master to the clients and achieve accuracy in microseconds or milliseconds.